Hello, and welcome to the part three of the lecture on complex survey designs and weighting using Stata. My name is Chris Curran, and I'm an assistant professor of public policy at the UMBC School of Public Policy. This lecture is part three of a three-part series that demonstrates how to deal with complex survey design in large-scale data using the statistical programming language Stata. In part one, we had a motivation. We saw that often large-scale data is clustered, stratified, and oversampled. Things that are good for both logistics and financial feasibility, but characteristics that can complicate analysis if not properly dealt with. In part two of the series, we learned a couple of techniques in Stata to deal with such clustering, stratification, and oversampling. In particular, we examined the use of key weights as well as the use of the VCE cluster functionality in Stata to address clustering. In part three, we're going to examine a combined way of doing this, a more proper way through the survey set commands in Stata. Survey set commands are a series of commands that allow you to automate the process of accounting for complex survey design um, through first identifying variables that are characteristics of the survey design, such as the weight and the stratification and clustering variables, and then applying a simple prefix to future commands that allows those commands to be recognized as part of the survey design. Let's quickly look at the survey commands in Stata. Survey Suite, abbreviated SVY, allows you to set up data specifying the weights, the primary sampling unit, that's the PSU, and stratification. The way this works is we first issue a command survey set, or SVY set. And the SVY set command basically tells Stata all of the characteristics of the sampling design that are important for accounting for it. So here's the, the syntax of the survey set command. We begin with the command survey set. We pass the PSU variable. So this is just a variable that represents the primary sampling unit of the data. So again, the variable name there will vary based on the data set you're using. In brackets, we pass the p-weight, so it says p-weight equals, and then we pass the variable name for the p-weight. It's similar to what we were doing with the mean command before when we were just using weighting. We then include a comma, and in state of this would all be on the same line, but in virtue of being a PowerPoint here, it's rolled over to a second line. But a comma and then the, uh, the argument strata, where in parentheses we pass a variable that represents the different strata that that observation aligns with. We then have a few other options, VCE linear and single unit center. Um, these options are a little less important. If you want to dig into the help profile for survey set, you can learn more about the different options here as well as the functionality of these. Suffice to say that VCE linear is simply telling Stata kind of the, the statistical tests and the process by which to run some of the background calculations, where single unit center is telling Stata what to do in the case of strata that only have a single observation. So again, there's some different options there that you're more than welcome to explore and learn about, but kind of as a default, VCE linear and single unit center are um, places that you can use as a jumping off point. So what would this look like in actual data? Well, here's the syntax with variables inserted. So again, I begin with the command survey set. I pass it a variable for the PSU. In brackets, I pass it the variable for the p-weight. I then have a comma, and in the strata option, I include the variable that represents the strata that the observation aligns to. And then again, I have the VCE linear and single unit centered options specified as well. Let's move to Stata and actually see some of that in action, as well as see what it does when we run estimates. I'm going to open my Stata windows. On the left, I have my two file editor, and on the right, I have my output window. Again, I'm using data from the ECLS data set, which is data on kindergarten students from the 2010 school year. We've used this data previously in several other videos, as well as the first two parts of this segment series. But to begin with, uh, in my do file editor, I have the survey set command. So I've added a comment that says survey set the data. The command survey set, which you can see turns blue, so Stata recognizes it as a command. I pulled a PSU variable, I pulled the weight, and I pulled the strata variable. And I just used the same syntax that I demonstrated in the PowerPoint slide. Now if I was to highlight this line of code and run it, we'll notice some output in the Stata window. And basically Stata has identified the p-weight that I passed it, it's identified the strata, sampling units, and some of the other options that I specified in survey set. This ran successfully, and this demonstrates that Stata now understands the complex survey design of my data. When it comes time to use this, I actually have to specify that I want to reference this survey set. So let's say, for instance, I was interested, again, in the average or mean of 
child Asian variable, which again is just a binary indicator for whether or not a student is Asian or not. Well, before we had just been using the mean command and the variable name child Asian. So again, I have this comment that says take the mean of child Asian without using survey. Let's try that. Okay, I can see that without accounting for any of my sampling design, the average of child Asian is 0.08, which means that about 8% of the, the sample are Asians. In order to account for the sampling design, all I have to do is add this prefix SVY to the beginning of the command. So I say SVY mean child Asian. Highlight that and run that command. And what I see now is a few things have changed in my output. First of all, the average or the mean for child Asian has nearly been cut in half from 0.08 to 0 0.04. So again, this took into account the oversampling of Asian students and has adjusted that back to a proper level. You'll also notice that my standard error has gone from 0.002 to 0 0.007, almost four times as large. And this reflects the fact that in the data, there is clustering of students or non-independence between observations. In my naive estimate up here, where I just ran the command mean child Asian, data interprets this as a random sample or interprets it as independence between all the observations. And because of that, the standard error is artificially low. By running the survey set command and using the survey prefix, the standard error is actually expanded to represent the non-independence between observations and the fact that this isn't a true random sample. And what that essentially does is it introduces more uncertainty into my estimates. So you notice not only has the standard error grown, but if I was to also look at the 95% confidence interval between these two runs, I see that my 95% confidence interval has now expanded, which of course is what we would expect with a larger standard error. So this is important because it means that not only could my mean be incorrect if I didn't account for survey setting, but also statistical tests about whether this is different than zero, or as we get into regressions, whether effects are actually statistically significant, could be altered or perhaps misstated if I had not taken into account the survey design. So once the data is survey set, I'm then ready to use the SVY command throughout the rest of my code. So if I was interested instead of child Asian and child white, I simply type SVY in the command mean child white and highlight and run. And I'm able to get estimates of the variable child white that account for the sampling design. Likewise, when it comes time to run a regression, I can put the SVY prefix before the regress command and also account for the survey design and sampling design in my regressions. So when you think about dealing with complex survey design and sampling, the proper way is to use the survey set command. It's more robust and uh, more proper than just using p-weights on their own or the clustering option on its own. Survey set combines both of those while also doing some other accounting for the survey design and provides the estimates that are most properly accounted for um, in virtue of the design of the sample. So this ends the, the part three lecture on Stata designs for complex sampling. I hope this has been helpful for you as you think about how to account for the survey design of large scale data that you're using. And I encourage you as you go forward to make sure that you're implementing survey and the survey set option properly as you think about generating descriptive statistics and running regressions on projects that you may be working on. So I thank you for your time and attention to this and I look forward to chatting more later.